Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and coach. You're on The Steady Coach. Today, we're going to be talking about BPPV, or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, and whether BPPV falls into the category of neural circuit dizziness, and whether my methods can help you if you have BPPV. Before we jump into that, I'd like you to know that this video is part of a series of unedited videos in which I answer your important questions. So if you're new here, first of all, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button. You should also definitely check out the Ask Dr. Yo playlist, which I'm going to link to in the video description below. Now, we're going to talk about what BPPV is very briefly in this video, and then we're going to talk about the differences between having an acute episode, like a single or couple episodes of BPPV, and having chronic BPPV and recurrent BPPV. And then we're going to tie that all back into neural circuit dizziness and let you know when it can and can't help and what things you should focus on to recover. Okay, so BPPV is often known as the crystals in the ear problem. So many of you out there will probably have heard that particular explanation. And the reason it happens is because our brain has two sets of vestibular organs, one on each side, and the brain compares information from each side to know where you are in space, essentially. So what happens with BPPV is a small piece of calcium or a crystal breaks off and starts floating around in the fluid of just one ear. Because that calcium is not something your brain knows about, it starts moving the fluid around and your brain misinterprets that fluid moving around as a sign that you're moving. But that's only coming from one ear, not the other. That causes your brain to become confused and that results in vertigo. Typically what happens is someone has a really nasty episode of vertigo and then they go to the vestibular therapist. The vestibular therapist can usually very quickly and easily diagnose this. And then through a series of very simple exercises can get that calcium crystal out of the fluid filled part of the inner ear where it doesn't belong back to where it belongs and the symptoms resolve. And there are four ways that a vestibular therapist will know if you have BPPV. And it's important for you to hear this because you're going to see later why when someone has chronic or recurrent BPPV, these criteria might not be met. First of all, these episodes of vertigo happen with movement. They happen with positional changes and they tend to happen consistently. So if you move positions the same way over and over again, you will have the response over and over again. Although the second characteristic is it will fatigue over time, meaning if you repeat or if you repeatedly change that position over and over the same way over time, you're not going to have as strong of a vertigo response. Also, these episodes of vertigo tend to be very brief. They're usually seconds to minutes long. And yes, they can be very intense, but usually people don't have a lot of symptoms between, although some of you may feel a little off, a little woozy when you're not changing positions as well. And then finally, you might have jerky eye movements called nystagmus. And I say might because sometimes these can't be seen by the naked eye. And I've even seen cases where even when we use specialized goggles and equipment, it doesn't really pick up on the jerky eye movements. Those jerky eye movements happen because your eye and your inner ear are connected. So when bad information is coming in from your inner ear, your eye doesn't respond normally either. And that can cause nystagmus. But if you don't see nystagmus, that doesn't necessarily mean you don't have BPPV. Okay, so again, you have those signs, the vestibular therapist knows you have BPPV, you do an exercise, you hop off the table, and usually you're done. Sometimes you need to come back for a second maneuver, but again, most of the time this is very quickly and easily resolved, and it's, it's done after that. So the reason that you're on my channel most likely is because that has not been your experience. You may have either had an episode and then ended up with chronic symptoms afterward for no known reason. 
Or you may be having repeated episodes, like you're just constantly having the crystals go out of place or signs that the crystals might be out of place and you're having these episodes over and over again. So this is where neural circuit dizziness comes in. In the first case, the easy one is the one where you just have the episode of BPPV and then from then on out, you feel really dizzy. You may not feel the vertigo anymore. So that initial positional vertigo that you felt may not be happening anymore, but you may feel all sorts of other symptoms that indicate your sense of orientation, your balance system, your vestibular systems are not working correctly. So again, may come with visual symptoms, may come with difficulty in large spaces. You may have trouble focusing your eyes on things. You may have trouble with patterns. You may feel like you're moving all the time, or you might feel like movement is exaggerated. Lots of different symptoms that can come with this. In these cases, again, you definitely need to do your due diligence and make sure you're medically evaluated to know that there's nothing else going wrong. But the vast majority of the time what's happening here is you have developed neural circuit dizziness as the result of that BPPV episode. This is actually not that common population level. BPPV is incredibly common. It is the number one cause of acute vestibular symptoms. It happens to a lot of people. The vast majority of people do not go on to develop chronic symptoms. However, in my world, this is extremely common. I have worked with so many people whose chronic dizziness symptoms started with an episode of BPPV. And the reason this happens, I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail here because I talk about this in so many of my other videos, but the reason this happens is because of course, BPPV initially causes dizziness. It initially confuses your brain. Your brain has predictions about what's going to happen. And those predictions do not meet what is actually happening from your senses. So the sensory information, the information from your eyes, your ears, and your sense of touch don't match what your brain is actually expecting. This leads to dizziness. With people who have neural circuit dizziness, the problem is the brain just doesn't correct this problem. Normally, a person feels dizzy and the brain says, oh, okay, I'd better fix my programming. There's something about my programming that means I'm not using sense information correctly. People with neural circuit dizziness, their brain hasn't done that. It, it hasn't updated its programming. And in general, what I see is the problem is the brain is stuck in a cycle of bad predictions due to fear, anxiety, and stress overall, okay? So sometimes that's fear, anxiety, and stress that was just started by a really scary symptom onset. Like the first time you had BPPV, it was super scary. But often it's the result of a long-standing pattern of chronic stress, relating to yourself poorly, having a lot of anxiety, and those things kind of being in the background, filling up your stress bucket, and I talk about that a lot on my channel, so that when the initial dizziness event happens, that initial BPPV happens, your stress bucket is already so full that your brain basically just starts assuming that everything is dangerous, specifically the triggers that initially led to the BPPV and now any symptoms that have stayed after BPPV. Again, if you want to learn more about this, please see the rest of the videos on my channel. This is the topic of my channel. And you should also consider taking the free course. So in other words, if your symptoms started with BPPV and you developed chronic symptoms and you don't have BPPV anymore, then go ahead, just take the free course, link in the video description, and you can use my channel just like everyone else here. Welcome, you belong here. It gets a little trickier for those of you who have recurrent episodes of BPPV. So people who have those episodes of vertigo or positional vertigo again um, that either recur frequently or, or recur periodically after that initial event. Maybe you do feel dizzy between episodes. Maybe you don't, but you're getting the episodes frequently. So of course, for some people, this can indicate a health problem. You do want to get your doctor's uh, examination to make sure that's not the case for you. But what I often see here is one of two things. Sometimes what's happening is because your brain is stuck in this cycle of fear, anxiety, and stress and starts to identify the triggering positions as dangerous, 
again, maybe that first episode was scary. Maybe the medical professional told you, please avoid these positions. For whatever reason, your brain has decided that those positions are dangerous. It can mimic BPPV-like symptoms, even if you don't actually have a crystal loose. Once your brain knows how to do that particular symptom and it starts to think of that particular position or trigger as dangerous, it can mimic it. It can activate those symptoms even if there's no crystal loose. So simple solution here, you want to go to the vestibular therapist and check to see if you actually have a crystal loose. If you don't, and the vestibular therapist either does a repositioning maneuver just to be sure and you don't feel better or there is no crystal loose, then what might be happening here is your brain is just using that particular symptom as part of a neural circuit problem. And that puts you very much squarely in the category of everyone else on my channel who have all sorts of symptoms, including some of whom have vertigo, that are just a neural circuit problem. It's just the brain predicting danger when that is a false um, prediction. The second category here when you have recurrent episodes is that you are in fact having recurrent episodes, meaning you go to the vestibular therapist and the vestibular therapist says, oh, yep, there's a crystal loose. We'd better do the maneuver or the exercise again. And then you have another episode. You go back to the vestibular therapist. Yep, there it is again. It's back. So you're actually having crystals break loose. There is, it's not your brain causing you to think the crystals are loose. The crystals are actually loose. This can also be related to neural circuit dizziness. Yes, the crystals are a real problem. There is something physically happening in your ear. But as I've said in many other videos, neural circuit dizziness doesn't mean it's all in your head. It's not just an imaginary symptom. There are physical changes that happen in your body when you are dealing with neural circuit dizziness, when you're dealing with very high levels of fear, anxiety, and chronic stress. The inner ear does not work as well. We know this. And we, we while the research can't prove what I'm saying right now because we're still learning about this, there are some very strong indications that there is a, a, a very strong relationship between the stress in your life, physical and psychological distress, and recurrent BPPV. So first of all, we know that there, are, there have actually been studies that show a very strong relationship between ongoing stress and recurring BPPV. So that's relatively cut and dry. Again, that can't prove causation, but there's a very strong relationship there. But also, we know from research on vestibular migraine that one of the most common uh, co-occurring conditions, meaning something that happens with the migraine, is BPPV. People who have vestibular migraines are much more likely to end up with BPPV. And the reason we think that is, is because migraines, again, although I consider them to be neural circuit conditions, they're not just imaginary. There is actually a physiologic change that happens in your brain when you're having a migraine. This physiologic change is reversible. It is not permanent. It is something that is treatable and you can stop having these physiologic changes and migraines. But when a migraine happens, it, it does affect the blood flow to your head and neck. The inner ear is a very, very small, very delicate organ that has to maintain a very tightly controlled environment to work properly. And when that environment is disrupted, it can make the crystals much more likely to break off. And that's why we think, again, this is not just my opinion, this is, this is generally what's thought of in the vestibular science field. That's why people with vestibular migraine are so much more likely to end up with BPPV. All this being said, if you are doing things that cause you to be less likely to have those kinds of blood flow changes, either because you have migraine or maybe you never had migraine, but you're having blood flow changes because you're under chronic stress and dealing with a lot of fear, anxiety, and distress. In either of those cases, same thing. We're doing the same things to help you with this. If you aren't having those blood flow changes, you're going to be much less likely to have the crystals break off and cause these physical BPPV attacks. So my point here is that even if you actually have physical BPPV and that is recurring for you, 
it is very, very much well worth your time to treat this like a neural circuit problem because the crystals do not mean that there's something horribly physically wrong with you that means that you're going to have crystals break off again in the near future or that condemns you to having chronic symptoms between episodes either. So in all of these cases, what are the things that you need to work on? Number one, avoidance. People with BPPV who've had BPPV often develop very strong avoidance behaviors about triggering positions. And you want to get started now on getting yourself back into those provoking positions because your brain will learn that you being in these positions is dangerous and it makes it much more likely that it's going to trigger symptoms. So you want to, in a graded, slow way, start exposing yourself to those positions again sleeping on your side, being on your back. Again, it's different for each person, but whatever it is, bending over, you want to get yourself doing those things again. Second, you want to address your stress bucket. The things in your life that are going on outside of symptoms and in how you respond to symptoms affect how sensitive your brain is to the triggers themselves, the symptoms themselves, and again, it can affect blood flow to your inner ear. So you want to work on those things. Again, I talk about this elsewhere on my channel, not going to go into it here. And finally, this is kind of a unique point for people with BPPV or who've had BPPV. You need to work on your fear of recurrence, okay? This is a tough one because especially if your symptoms all started with BPPV and it was a really awful first episode or 10th episode or whatever it was, it is really, really tough to stomach what I just said. You may be living in complete fear that the symptoms are going to recur, that you're going to have another vertigo episode because it, it's really uncomfortable. The less fear you have of a recurrence, the more that you know you're equipped to handle it, that it could be unpleasant, but not actually dangerous or, or going to condemn you to chronic symptoms, the better it, this recovery process is going to go. So I tell this story to anyone who enters my coaching group who's had BPPV. But back when I was working in a more conventional clinical setting as an audiologist, I saw so much BPPV. It was my bread and butter. I saw multiple cases every day. I worked in ENT offices several times. So I saw a lot of BPPV. And the vast majority of the time, these, I, 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 lovingly refer to them as my sweet little old ladies because it was often older adults who were experiencing BPPV. They would hop on my table. They'd be like, oh, I feel so awful. I would do the repositioning maneuver with them. It would be awful. They would hate it. And then they'd sit back up and they'd be like, okay, cool. Thanks. I, I, I'm good. And then they would just walk out of my office and I wouldn't see them again. That was it. And what BPPV can end up being for you is like what a stomach flu might be for someone. No, you don't want it. Yes, it's going to be an uncomfortable 24 hours, or maybe 48 hours. You wouldn't wish it on someone else, but it's not necessarily something that you need to remember or think about a couple weeks later. When was the last time you had the stomach flu? You probably have to think about that, right? So that's what episodes of BPPV can be like when your brain doesn't latch onto it as something that's really important and dangerous. That's the point that you're trying to get to. And again, lots of different ways to do this, but I think the most important thing you can do is become educated about it, and that's why I made this video. I hope this helps guide you. Again, if any of these situations apply to you, please take the free course. It totally applies. All the videos on my channel apply to you. You are not the exception just because you're having some episodes of BPPV in the middle. It, it is totally related to the neural circuit dizziness, and you can resolve both at the same time. Questions and comments, please drop them below. Looking forward to that. And as always, if you could like, share, subscribe to my channel, these things help me reach more people. If you're listening to this as a podcast, you can also follow the podcast and leave me a high star rating. These things also really help me reach more people. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.